الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما اتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا صدق الله العظيم سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي دروس بالله respected brothers respected elders mothers and sisters listening at home bi fadlillah ta'ala Insha'Allah Ta'ala, in tonight's session we continue on the same subject started, titled Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and the successor, the Khalifa of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The last session of Dars Hadith was in the month of Sha'ban and at length we had <coughs> discussed and covered Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiyallahu ta'ala and swift march into Iraq taking control of every city in Iraq and later on when one portion of the Muslim army entered into Syria Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala and gave instructions to Hazrat Khalid bin Walid to immediately move into the region of Syria and to aid the Muslimin there. <coughs> that difficult, perilous journey, the five-day march cutting through Iraq into Syria, uncharted area. Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and when he touched down into Syria, and the Romans were informed of that, they were horrified. It was as if though death was above their heads. They were shocked. This was impossible for a man to enter into Syria. All the main roads were blocked off. <coughs> when Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and got into Syria, again very, very quickly, three, four cities surrendered to Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and, and Muslims took control even without putting a fight. He went as far into Syria, deep into Syria, touching the area of Dimashk. Hazrat Khalid bin Walid just touched on Dimashk, bypassed it and went towards the direction of Busra. Just warning the people of Dimashq, reminding them that the Muslims are here now. So stay alert and be prepared. So it was just a slight touch of Dimashq, bypassing it into Busra. This is intelligence, this is wisdom that Allah had given Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala an, making the enemy think at all times. When the Romans thought that the Muslims will take over and take a full battle, full fight with the Romans in the area of Dimashq, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid turns his direction and goes towards Busra. There when he goes to Busra again, subhanAllah, a siege is laid by the Muslimin, a fight takes place, eventually the Romans surrender and the entire city Busra surrenders with the condition that they will pay jizya, tax, to the Muslimin. Now the Romans regroup in the main city of Ajnabin. As Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and also moves into that part of the region. We started the first part of how uh, the Muslims prepared themselves for the battle of Ajnabin. The Muslims... <coughs> regrouped 
and arrayed themselves in position. It was the 30th of July, the year 634. The Sunnah of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and I say Sunnah because Sunnah in the Arabic language means the Adat also, Tafsid, not the Sunnah in the technical term. The Sunnah of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala an was that usually when he would encounter the enemy it would be after Fajr Salah. This was his Tafsid. He would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make dua and position his soldiers after Fajr Salah, early in the morning, prepare them for a fight with the enemies. This was his tafsir. Throughout the biography of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala, and you will see this style, this manner, this method of fighting. <coughs> this was a very important fight for the Muslims. For the very first time, Muslims are to view this ocean of disbelievers, kuffar, as numerous as atoms in front of them. Kuffar on the right, in the middle, on the left, everywhere, soldiers, armed to the teeth. Everything they had, the power, they were so confident that the leader, whose name was Master Warden, Yanam Tawska? Master Warden. Out of respect, they would call him Master Warden. He did not even come up with any strategy to fight the Muslims. The Muslims were nothing in numbers compared to the Romans. They adopted one method, and that was to fight in a block system. In a block system. So confident were they that they thought we will just push the Muslims out from Syria and back into Arabia. Not knowing, subhanAllah, the kudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa that the companions had. <coughs> Al Khalid bin Walid early in the morning gets his commandos, mujahideen, prepared. He gives the right wing to Hazrat Abdul Rahman bin Abi Bakr, the son of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, and says to him, You are in charge of the right wing. Hazrat Sa'id bin Amr is chosen as an Amir for the left wing. Then you have the middle section, the stronghold of the Muslimin. That responsibility was given to Hazrat Mu'az ibn al-Jabal radiallahu ta'ala. Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala had a group of extra 4,000 mujahids under the middle section in which the elite were with Hazrat Khalid bin Walid. That is where Hazrat Khalid bin Walid was, behind them. You had Hazrat Khalid bin Walid, you had the great Mujahid, Hazrat Amr ibn al-As, you had Hazrat Rafi', you had Hazrat Abdullah, the son of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala, and you had the impetuous Zirar radiallahu ta'ala, and the one who understood Hazrat Khalid bin Walid just by looking into the eyes of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala. So he was with Hazrat Khalid bin Walid in that part of the area. Hazrat Khalid bin Walid knew that this fight was an important event for the Muslimin. What he did very cleverly, look at the hikmat, look at how Hazrat Khalid bin Walid planned. So you have a right wing and a left wing. He put another right flank and a left flank so that to avoid encirclement. This, this is what the, the Romans were good at. Because they were so many in numbers, they would just pour down, come down and march forward and march forward until they would encircle the enemies, enemies to them. And then they would crush the enemies from encircling them in the middle to kill them totally. This is how they would fight. So Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anew. So what he did, he made this extra right flank like this and a left one this way. So it, would, it was very difficult for them to cut across them. This was the tartib. And Master Warden from a distance is looking at Hazrat Khalid bin Walid on a horse riding. Hazrat Khalid bin Walid was very brave. This 
threat of someone ambushing him was always imminent. But in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would do that. I remember when <coughs> the Americans were bombarding uh, Afghanistan, there was a picture on the front page of Daily Mirror where on one side daisy cutters and bombs were descending, coming down. And there was one mujahid very calmly, with full concentration, is in his qiyam and reading salah. And the title was, This Posture Defies Logic. <laughs> and the title was, This Posture Defies Logic. And really, it does defy logic. I mean, this man, you know, you've got bombs all around. Subhanallah. And here he is, Allah was standing. He's not worried. Subhanallah. This was the level of Iman. So the Khalid bin Walid is there on the horse. Once all the mujahids are standing in the right position, all arrayed, prepared for the battle, and the kuffar were in their blocks, the Romans, so the Khalid bin Walid came to them and said to them, in the name of Allah, remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you. And that is the final thing that you take in with you as you march forward. Keep in your heart Allah and that we are the followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said to them that I want all of you to fire your arrows from the bows that you have in a very unified way. Like a swarm of locusts attacking the enemies in a unified way. So you have arrows going in one direction in a unified way like missiles to the enemy. So this is what you should do. This was the first advice that Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and gave to the Mujahid. And now Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and takes his position. He looks at Mu'adh ibn al-Jabal in the middle there. He looks at Hazrat Abdul Rahman bin Abi Bakr, Hazrat Sa'id bin Amr radiallahu ta'ala the right flank, the red flank, everything is ready. And Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and says, when I give the order, that is the time you start. You start the attack. Only when I give the order. Preparation has been ma- made and you had the individual mujahid giving information to Hazrat Khalid bin Walid waiting to see what the kuffar are planning to do. No plan, no nothing. They are still standing and looking at the Muslimin until this very old bishop man marches out from the rows of the kuffar and comes forward in no man's land where you have that original line where the kuffar are on one side and you have the Muslims on one side. Recently in the earthquake, when the earthquake took place, you had some of the journalist with one foot in Pakistan and one foot in India. So this man comes forward, this old aged person, bishop with a black hat, and he comes forward and he says, I have nothing with me, no arms. I wish to speak to your leader. Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and from behind the middle section comes around all the way on his horse right to the front and this old man says that I want to speak to your priest to your religious high leader whoever he is Al Khalid bin Walid said that I am the Amir he said you are the Amir Al Khalid bin Walid said that I am only the Amir if I obey Allah and his messenger if I disobey Allah and his messenger then I am not responsible for this group and they will not honor me when he heard this from Hazrat Khalid bin Walid, he was shocked of the humility that Muslim leaders had in them. Usually someone who is a leader will not be as humble as Hazrat Khalid bin Walid or the companion. So everything was around this obediency, the taqwa to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the ahqam, the sharia given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if I am to obey Allah and his messenger... And I am the Amir. And he looked at Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and he said, 
I have a proposal to make. Hazrat Khalid bin Walid looked at him. He had this cross hanging from the neck in front here. Sign of shirk. And Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala an with his helmet and on the helmet was the amama that he would tie with the auspicious hair of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inside the helmet all prepared with the sword and said, what is it that you wish to speak? He said, look, Master Warden is in a very good mood and wants to be generous with the Muslim. You listening, Shabir Bhai? Master Warden is in a very good mood and wishes to be generous to the Muslims. And he said, look, Khalid, we have heard of you. Radiallahu ta'ala. This is the first time I see you. And he was speaking fluent Arabic because all the people delegated to go and speak to the Muslimin were those who were Christian Arabs. They knew the Arabic language in Syria. So he said to Hazrat Khalid bin Walid, you know that even the Persians came into Syria and they wanted to fight the Romans and they were crushed, annihilated, completely wiped out. You had other communities and other people coming into Syria to fight the Romans, they were killed also instantly. What makes you, the Muslims, feel so confident that you have the power to fight the Romans? Can't you see how many men they are? Caesar has prepared for this fight. And we have the two top generals who are in charge. Master Warden and Kubuklar. These people have spent the entire life in the battlefield. It will be impossible for the Muslims to defeat the Romans. So this is the proposal I come up with. You still have a chance. Master Warden has said that he is prepared to give every soldier that is with you one dinar, one suit, one robe, and one helmet. Every mujahid. One dinar, one robe, and one helmet. And you go back, retrace your roots, steps back, go back to Arabia, where you came from. And he is prepared to give Khalid bin Walid 100 dinar. Dinar, ye sone ka sikka hai. Dirham ne, sone ka sikka, dinar. 100 dinars, 100 robes, and 100 helmets. This is the offer that Master Warden puts forward to you, O Khalid bin Walid, take it. And the Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and looked at him and said to him, go and tell Master Warden that Khalid gives him a choice. Khalid gives him a choice. Now imagine my respected brothers, what iman Subhanallah al what yaqeen they had. They come up with their banners and their crosses and the crucifix or ye lakre ki sari cheeze jo banate hai and religious minded people and all of them there praying to Jesus and whatever their shirk must be at that time in their thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. There is no end of the Romans. So confident that Warden did not even want to come up with any strategy in fighting. And he said to his people, we will just push them out. We will slog them out, slog them out, out of Syria. And they will go back to Arabia. Subhanallah. And as Khalid bin Walid said, I give Warden three choices. Aslim Tuslam. And I say to you, O Bishop, it is never too late. Say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, in the battlefield. And salvation is for you in this dunya and in the hereafter. Talking to a bishop, say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Salvation is for you in this dunya and in the hereafter. If you reject my first proposal, 
Then the second proposal is jizya, tax. The Muslims are rulers. You are subjects. You are. You will be the citizens, but you will have to pay tax to the Muslim government. You will have the freedom. You can worship who you want, do what you want. Freedom will be given to you, provided you pay tax to the Muslim government. Provided you stay under the Khilafat of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an in Madinatul Munawwara. This is the second choice. And the third choice, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid looked at him. Khalid bin Walid took his sword out. And the third choice that you have is jihad. And said to them, we are prepared. We don't look at numbers. I have given you a choice. Go and tell your master warden that Khalid gives him a choice of three. Choose one. Aslim Tuslam, become a Muslim, and you are, you will share this beautiful religion with us. We are brothers. Or pay us tax, like the other parts of Syria. Or then be prepared. As for the offer that Master Warden makes to me, he said that, look, when we defeat you, we will have everything what you are planning to give us anyway. So there is no difference. So what offer are you making to me? So confident was Hazrat Khalid bin Walid. Subhanallah al And so this priest looks down. Burha admi tha ek bichara. Kya karta Hazrat Khalid bin Walid ke saamne. And he went back, he went, and so scared were they with Hazrat Khalid bin Walid that the, the, the generals, the Roman generals would not come in front to talk to him. They would have to send someone who is a religious figure, hoping that somebody might, the, the, oppos, the opposition will respect someone who is religious, a, a, a bishop or a priest. Master Warden was informed by this bishop and Warden got very, very angry very angry and what he did he took his special force and he said that I want two rows to be formed in the front section of the army and these were a group of people a line of archers and slingers a line of archers and slingers this was the way they fought and they were very strong in that method of fighting so a group of archers and slingers were put in front of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and well equipped. Muslims didn't have all that. Few in numbers and the weapons also. And when Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and saw what Master Warden was instructing the Romans to do, Hazrat Mu'ad ibn al-Jabal radiallahu ta'ala and who was in control of the middle section was giving instruction to the Mujahid in the front that before they form a line, I want you to attack. And Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala an from the back shouted at Hazrat Mu'az ibn al-Jabal and said, No, don't do that until I tell you. This is hikmat, this is experience. Subhanallah. You see in everything what Hazrat Khalid bin Walid does. Even people like Mu'az ibn al-Jabal were impatient. Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and was in no rush to fight. And he says, no, not until I tell you. And they started firing missiles of arrows, archers, slingers, all prepared, professional people, fighters. It is said that the first row of the Muslimin and the second row received a lot of injury. A lot of the Muslimin became shaheed. And Hazrat Mu'adh ibn al-Jabal is looking at Hazrat Khalid bin Walid, waiting that when will you give us the instruction. He send, sent a man to tell Hazrat Mu'adh ibn al-Jabal that this is a risk. We are too far from the Romans. We haven't got the right weapons. This is the Qurbani sacrifice we have to give. I want the archers and the slingers to come more forward, close to us, and that is the time we attack them. And Hazrat Khalid bin Walid is there, just looking on. Until what happens? Hazrat Dirab radiallahu ta'ala an comes to Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and says, O oh, commander of the Muslimin, allow me, give me permission to go and fight them. 
Who is that Hazrat Zirar? When Hazrat Zirar came, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid said, Look, Zirar, I am only giving you permission to go and fight. Only one. I am giving you permission to go and fight. And Hazrat Zirar radiallahu ta'ala an, what other news would he want than to go and fight? The Romans. This time he was wearing everything, the helmet and the coat of mail, and he had a shield that was made out of elephant hide, and well prepared. Why? Because the missiles were being fired. Usually the style of fighting of Hazrat Zirar was that he would take out his everything, the armor out. He would disrobe himself, take everything out. And he went forward, he went forward, as they saw this man coming in front of them, they just didn't know who this man was. Who would want to come in the face of death? What kind of a strategy is this? How do you fight the Muslims? A man comes in front, you have the first, second line being shaheed, and then all of a sudden you have this, subhanallah, great mujahid, in front of you. And as he comes close, they are just looking at him that what is he coming with? As he came forward, he said to the Romans, he says, I am your death. I am the death of the pale ones. Do you know who I am? I am Zirar bin Al-Azwar. I am Zirar bin Al-Azwar. These were the people who could smell the fragrance of Jannah in dunya and he disrobed and he took out his armor and everything out when they saw Hazrat Zirar they knew straight away that this is the naked man that they all feared this is the naked man that they all feared the naked mujahid remember he was not naked as in the top section was open satar to inki puri banti it was the top part this is how he would fight and I said earlier on that first there was, he would go in this mood of trance and he would shiver and shake. And then there was nothing to stop Hazrat Zirar radiallahu ta'ala an. And he disrobed and he went forward and he, and forward and he killed so many of the Romans that were in front of him. And the top generals were killed by Hazrat Zirar radiallahu ta'ala an. These people were just shocked. And two of the top generals, one was the governor of Amman and one was the governor of Tiberias. Tiberius. All these generals were dead. And now the fight becomes intense. Subhanallah. By waiting, the hikmat of Azza Khalid bin Walid works for him. The archers and the slingers become inactive. They are paralyzed. Now you have the Muslims going in. And the fighting continues, fighting continues. You have Hazrat Zirar right in the middle of them, fighting. And then you have Hazrat Khalid bin Walid, and you have the left wing, right wing, and the flanks pushing the Romans. And this continues until after Zuhur, late in the afternoon. Such was the fighting, such was the fighting. Finally, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid looks from the back and he says, one push forward, one push forward. Imagine... A Qalil Jama'at is pushing a Kathir Jama'at. They were so confident that we will just push them out of Syria. And now the Muslims are pushing them. Subhanallah. Kam min fi'atin qalilatin ghalabat fi'atan kathiratan bi Allah says, do you not see so many people who are few in numbers overpower those who are many in numbers? Bahut ziyada. Bi'iznillah, by the permission of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the kudrat of Allah. And Allah wants something, subhanallah. He makes Musa alayhi salatu was salam grow up in the palace of Fir'aun. Can you beat that? He makes Musa alayhi salam grow up in the palace of Fir'aun. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanallah, the fight continues until both the Romans and the Muslims run out of energy, they become so tired. Late in the afternoon, the Romans turn back to their original line, go back into their camps. And this was the method of fighting at that time, and the Muslims would go back again. Subhanallah. For the Muslims, it was a clear victory. And for Master Warden, it was a defeat. It was just the first day, the first 
few hours had passed, and when he saw the dead in his uh, army, the top generals were dead, soldiers were dead, it was a great shock for him. It was, n- it was nothing of the sort that he imagined. Straight away, he called a meeting, the council of war. They all regrouped, master warden, and the Muslims went back, and what were they doing? What were they doing? Praying Salah. Subhanallah. Zuhur ki namaz, asr ki namaz. They are praying Salah and these people are doing mashwira, what to do. The Muslims are taking on the elite army of the world at that time, my respected brothers. Just picture the Roman army at that time, the Romans. Allah talks about Rum, Ghulibati Rum. And Allah talks about Persia. Ghulibati Rum. And Master Warden sits and he says that what has happened is a tragedy. We are so many in numbers. But they have the upper hand. And some of them said that no, we have to do something. Master Warden says the only way to defeat the Muslims is to assassinate Aliyazu Billah to take out Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala. This was the plan. Do you want to continue or shall we continue in the next session? Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala. They say if you take out the head and that is it. That is it, the tail. Just You don't count for the tail. Take out the head. It is this man, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid. We need to take him out. How do we do that? They knew that to get to Hazrat Khalid. They couldn't take control of Zirar radiallahu ta'ala who was a student of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid. How are they going to take the master himself? So now, this is how the Romans were and generally the Kuffar, very shrewd and cunning. Master Warden said that I have a plan. I will send David, that was a person related to Master Warden. He says, David, I want you to go to Khalid bin Walid and say to him that Master Warden, he has put forward some proposal if you agree to that. A truce. Many people have died and we don't want more people to die in both the sides. The Roman camp and also for the Muslimin. So he said to David, go and tell Hazrat Khalid bin Walid. And what Warden had in mind was that he is to meet Hazrat Khalid bin Walid in one specific area in the battlefield. At a distance where the Roman army will be on one side and the Muslims will be on one side. Only two people will meet. One is Hazrat Khalid bin Walid and the other one is Master Warden himself for the first time. So David as a messenger was to go to Hazrat Khalid bin Walid on the same day to talk to him to negotiate. And what did Master Warden do? What he had in mind was there were hillocks on the side in that area and he said to ten of his elites generals, that in the night I want you to hide behind the hillocks that are there and when Hazrat Khalid bin Walid comes to me, I won't have nothing in my hands, he will not have nothing in his hands what we will do is I will get hold of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and ten of you come and will finish off Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala plan dekha apne kuch samaj me baat hai ya nahi bhai have you understood the plan? Now this man David, first was the old bishop and now who goes? David. David goes to the Muslim camp and as he goes in the area where the Muslims were, he said to some of the Muslims that I wish to talk to Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala. Wallahi lazim, my respected brothers, this is mentioned and recorded in the books of Tariq, history. That when this man saw Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala an, his tongue got stuck in the mouth, he could not speak. Such was the awe and personality of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid that he just 
This man David just stood in front of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid when Hazrat Khalid bin Walid's eyes fell on David, glaring at him. This man David says that this muscular man, six foot plus of bones, strong bones and flesh in front of me. He says the eyes of Khalid bin Walid were pitiless. The piercing eyes. And he knew Hazrat Khalid bin Walid, the man who had no mercy for the kuffar, those who turned away from the kalima, no pity. No pity. And this is what happens to those people who have fought in wars continuously. I don't know if you've had time and opportunity to meet. Aap kabhi Afghanistan jayenge, you know, umreye ke liye, hajj ke liye jayenge, to kabhi kabhi wahan Afghani logo ko dekhe. When you look at them, when you look at their faces, you can't really tell what mood they are in. They have just one face. You can't tell how they are what. It is their life. And this was Hazrat Khalid bin Walid. He says, when I saw the face of Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala an, I was just wondering, how are we to fight? Let alone his army. How are we to take on this man? How is Master Warden going to take on this man? And are the ten people enough to take on Khalid bin Walid? He says that, Every part of Khalid bin Walid's body that was exposed had a scar on it. This was trademark to show the people of his vast experience that he had in the battlefield. Every part had a mark. He had a scar on the face. Yet he would wear an amama and a beard. Subhanallah. Very mujahid. And Hazrat Khalid bin Walid looked at him and said to him, Qul, speak! In the Arabic language. He said, when the words came out from Hazrat Khalid bin Walid, I started to shiver. Mere pair kaam ne lage. Ke kaha mujhe ye zimedari di? Kaha mujhe bej diya ke mein Khalid bin Walid ke saath baat karu? This is no exaggeration, my respected brothers. This is quote of the iman that the companions had. And the first thing he said, look Khalid bin Walid, let me tell you one thing. I, do, I am not here as a fighter in front of you, you know. I am just here as a messenger from Master Warden. So Khalid bin Walid said, I said, speak, speak. And he says, well, Master Warden has a proposal, another proposal now. First was before the fight, and now it was after the fight. Well, after the fight, okay, ek hi din hua fight ka, only one day. Another second proposal. And so the second proposal, what is the proposal? He says, well, enough blood has been shed from the, both the camps. The Muslims have died. And also the Romans have died. Romans took a heavy casualty. And so Master Warden says that he is personally going to come to you tomorrow and propose uh, some form of agreement, a pact, a truce in front of you if you agree. As a Khalid bin Walid, the experience and the nur and the firasat that he had said to David, let me tell you one thing. In Arabic, this is all in Arabic. David is an, a Christian Arab. He said that if Master Warden plans to trick the Muslim or if he wants to deceive us, then make sure, O David, tell your leader that we the Muslims are the masters of trickery. We the Muslims, because Huzur alayhi salam says, Al-Harbu Khida'a, Al-Harbu Khida'a, that it is jayiz for you to deceive anyone in military warfare, in, in, in the battlefield. So we are the masters. And I know exactly what you have planned, whatever you want to talk to me. And if it is truth that you speak to me, then my answer even to you is only one. I will not accept any proposal until you surrender to the Muslimin and you pay us jizya, tax. Nothing, no proposal. Tell that to your warden. And if it is deceive, deceit, doka and trick, trickery that you have in mind, then remember one thing David, you will be killed the Roman army will be killed, annihilated wiped out, like how the Persian army was wiped out you will all be killed you will all be killed and that is a promise that Khalid bin Walid puts in front of you that was too much information to digest, you know and David now turns back and he walks slowly in front towards 
the Roman camp, as he is walking, he is thinking. When he saw the face of Khalid bin Walid, the words of Khalid bin Walid, he said there is something about this man, this unshakable conviction, you know, unshakable conviction that he has. He's so confident. You know, the yaqeen that has Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala an had. He turned back and looked at Hazrat Khalid bin Walid, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid shouts at him, Tell me the truth, David. I promise to save you and your family. Look at the hikmah, Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and has got. Now he retraces back the steps, comes back to Hazrat Khalid bin Walid. And he said, Do you promise to save me and my family? And Khalid bin Walid said, This is the promise of a Muslim. Subhanallah. You will be saved. Nothing will happen to you. Your family will be saved. You are free to do what you want. We will not enforce Islam on you. Practice what you want. But tell me the truth. Now he spilled the beans and (laughs) gave the information and said that, you know what, there are ten men already hiding for you, Khalid bin Walid, just behind there. And tomorrow morning, that is the plan. Master Warden is going to come and he wants to handlock you and hold you. And that is the time ten, ten of the Romans will come out and they wish to assassinate you. So once you are out, it's easy pathway for the Romans. And everything, all information was given. <laughs> everything was given. Khalid bin Walid says, Acha. Okay, you go back. My promise is promised to you. If you don't go back, your life is in danger also. So you go back and tell exactly what, and tell whatever plan that you came up with, you came with to me, tell that to your master warden. And he went to master warden, master warden, God, did you tell him? He says, yeah, yeah, everything is done, planned, everything is, we'll meet you tomorrow. Okay. Al-Khalid bin Walid, now when David has gone, Al-Khalid bin Walid takes his sword out and the generals were there. He said, look, there are ten men there. It's, it's close to Maghrib Salah. Let me go myself and take care of all ten. Hazrat <laughs> Khalid bin Walid wants to take on the ten elite generals of the Roman army. Ten elite. One himself. He says, let me quickly go and come back. And Hazrat Abu Ubaidat ibn al-Jarrah, experienced, old in age, much older than Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala an. And one from Ashari Mubashara, he holds as a Khalid bin Walid, no, we will not allow you to go there. He says, no, no, I am the Amir. You listen to me. And as Abu Ubaidat ibn Jarrah said to Khalid bin Walid, listen to me. And again, the status that Hz. Abu Ubaidat ibn Jarrah had, Hz. Abu Ubaidah said that I give you mashwira that make ten mujahids in charge of your safety protection and in the morning they are to go behind that hill that is there and they should attack the ten Romans and kill them all and then when warden comes you can sort him out Brother Khalid bin Walid selected the ten and obviously from the ten one was Zirar radiallahu ta'ala and Zirar was made the Amir so now it was Maghrib Salah and everything was fine and you had... And these people, it, it was incredible fighting at that time. Nobody would fight in the night. You see. And the Romans were on one side camping, Muslim on one side. Hazrat Zirar got his ten and says, look, although Hazrat Khalid bin Walid has given us mashwira that we should take on these ten people in the morning, what difference does it make? Night or day? Uh, and, they, and he says, what difference does it make? Night or day? So he says, look, all ten of you. I am the Amir, you listen to me. <laughs> and he doesn't inform Nazar. Khalid bin Walid is there. And Nazar Zirar again. Subhanallah, sohbat ka asar to hai Nazar Khalid bin Walid. He goes with his sword and ten of them. And they go, and they go, and what happens? Wallahu alam. Early in the morning after Fajr Salah, Nazar Khalid bin Walid is prepared, everything is there. As according to plan, once, this was the tartib, when Nazar Khalid bin Walid gives instruction, wants to a mujahid, and that is it. No second time. That is it. You have to do that. Hazrat Khalid bin Walid is there now very quickly. 
Warden, Master Warden comes again with a big cross in front and with that pride and pomp that the Kuffar have walking slowly in front and he comes to Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala an and says to the Khalid bin Walid you know Khalid I respect you you are a great warrior no doubt but look at the condition of you Muslimin you haven't got wealth you haven't got power how are you going to fight us we have everything here he was talking as Khalid bin Walid said to him look at the words very bad Ghal says to him Ya Kalbun Nasara O Christian dog O Christian dog Allah Akbar he is talking and the first words come out from Azza Khalid bin Walid, Ya Kalbun Nasara, a Christian dog, stop this. When Warden was sworn at as Kalbun Nasara, Christian dog, he got angry. And with his anger, he came in front, and he was a strong man. Warden was again a, a fighter. And he got hold of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid, and he locked the head of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid in the arms like that. And Hazrat Khalid bin Walid was there. Hazrat Khalid bin Walid was now waiting for the ten Mujahids to come out. Allahu Akbar. And now Warden is so confident and now he is saying to the ten, come and let us finish him. And the Muslims were at a distance. Allah ki shan mere dost abdurudu. The ten Romans come out. Who come out? The ten Romans come out. And they had the helmet on it, everything. And this warden, he says, Now, O Khalid bin Walid, Romans, that now open, take your swords and kill Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala. And the face was covered as they came close to Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala. The first man to uncap the helmet was Hazrat Zirar. As a humiliation and the sense of humor that Hazrat Zirar also had, they had already killed the ten Romans and had taken their clothes as Male Ganimat and had put it on. <laughs> and had put it on and the faces were covered. And they came to Master Warden and all ten of the Mujahid, Muslim Mujahid were alive. And they came, all ten of them wearing that Roman armor. And they came and Hazrat Zirar radiallahu ta'ala and had his sword, subhanallah, unsheathed. And when Warden saw what he saw, he knew that death is in front of him now. They, the Muslims surrounded him as a Khalid bin Walid was left alone. And as a Khalid bin Walid looked at Warden, he says, I told you. That if you have a trick in mind, we Muslims are the masters of trickery. And the last words of Master Warden was, Khalid, do me a favor. I'd rather you kill me than that person who is in front of you, pointing at Zirar radiallahu ta'ala. And Hazrat Khalid bin Walid said, no. This honor I will give to Zirar radiallahu ta'ala. Abhi to Hazrat Zirar ko yu kaha hi tha. And one swing, subhanallah al body waha sar waha. This was done in the battlefield. Can you imagine the head taken out, cut off? And the Romans are watching. The main man, master warden, they came to assassinate the Khalid bin Walid. Wamakaru. And they plan against Allah. Wamakaru Allah. And Allah has a plan. Wallahu khayrul makirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq inshaAllah. We stop at that. Wa akhiru dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa maulana Muhammadin nabi al umi wa ala alihi wa sallim taslima. Allahumma taqabbal minna wa tub alayna inna kanta tawabu rahim. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Sami'na wa atana gufranaka rabbana wa ilayk al-masir. Bi rahmatika ya rahmatika.